I am William Bell. Welcome to our All Things Fulfilled channel. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the uh, the context of the fire that Peter uses in Second Peter chapter three, uh, further supporting our premises that we've established in the previous three videos on verse seven. And uh, in verse seven, Peter says, "But the heavens and the earth, which are now are preserved by the same word, or which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment." And perdition of ungodly men. So let's go and take a look at uh, where he gets this term, so we can see how it how it uh, falls in line and how it uh, you know lines up with uh, the statement that he made about um, the all flesh is grass and the people as the as the flower of grass and the grass withers and fades away. Uh, heaven and earth will pass away. And then to look at the words that we talked about in the previous video where we showed you that kept in store and uh, the word thesaurus or preserved comes out of, uh, meaning the treasure comes out of Deuteronomy chapter 32. Well, we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 32 and we're going to look at the source of Peter's language regarding the fire that was going to burn heaven and earth and see that, you know, again, he's still talking about the same thing. So let's go ahead and let's uh, delve into that uh, as we begin this, uh, this video. All right, so in Deuteronomy 32, yes, we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 32. And we're going to look at that context. But this time we're going to start in verse 22, I believe. Deuteronomy 32, and let's look at verse 22. All right, so when we begin there, uh, as a matter of fact, I want to start a little earlier. Uh, because, uh, let's see, yeah, let's start in verse 20, all right, in verse 20. The text says, and he said, I will hide my face from them, okay? So here's God turning away his favor, his presence. That means that there's a separation. God says, I'm going to hide my face from them. We're still talking about Israel's last days. Please go back and watch the previous video. You will appreciate this one even more if you watch that video. All right, and then he said, um, I will see what their end will be. Remember, he's not talking about their beginning. He's not talking about the beginning. He's talking about the end. And he said, um, for I will see what their end will be. Not Israel's beginning. I will see what their end will be. Now look at what he calls them. For they are a perverse nation. Jesus and the apostles used that several times. Jesus called them an adulterous and uh, wicked generation in Matthew 12 and Matthew 16 and Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Peter qual called them a perverse generation, a crooked nation in Acts 2 and verse 40. And Paul did it in Philippians chapter 2, either in verse 14 or 15. But he used that same language. They were all quoting from Deuteronomy 32. He says, for they are a perverse generation. Notice. They are a perverse generation, a single generation, a brood of vipers. They uh, children whom or in whom is no faith. They didn't believe. They were the people of Israel who rejected the Messiah. They did not believe that Jesus Christ was the one, the prophet that Moses spoke about in Deuteronomy 18 that God would raise up from among them like Moses and in whom they were to hear all things that he said to them. And he told them every soul who will not hear that prophet would be cut off from among the people. And so he says, children in whom is no faith. They have provoked me to jealousy. Paul quotes that uh, in Romans. They have provoked me to jealousy by what is not God. I think that's Romans 10. They have provoked him to jealousy. Well, he's talking about Israel who didn't believe. They have moved me to anger by their foolish idols. But I will provoke them to jealousy by those who are not a nation. That's a direct quote that Paul uses in Romans chapter 10. Let me, uh, let me see if I can find that for you uh, very quickly. Romans chapter 10, uh, where Paul is quoting this, he's quoting out of Deuteronomy. And he's talking about this prophecy concerning Israel in their last days. 
Look at verse 19. But I say, did Israel not know? First Moses, first Moses, first Moses said, or says, I will provoke them to jealousy, I will provoke you to jealousy, by those who are not a nation. Where is Paul quoting from? Deuteronomy chapter 32. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But it, to Israel, he says, all day long, I've stretched out my hand to a disobedient and contrary people. He's talking about Israel. Now, look at what he says about them. After he says, I will move them to anger by a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger. And shall burn to the lowest hell. It shall consume the earth. There's the fire burning the earth. Where's that language from in 2 Peter 3, 7? From Deuteronomy chapter 32. And set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap disasters on them. I will spend my arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger. Remember Jesus talked about the famines that would occur in Matthew 24. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes. He says they shall be wasted with hunger. That's the famine. Devoured by pestilence. That's the disease that comes from all the death and the putrefying flesh and the sickness and diseases that result from hunger. And all this destruction, they would be devoured by pestilence and bitter destruction. That includes the earthquakes, the wars, the rumors of wars. All of that's incorporated into that phrase. That's where Jesus was quoting. He says, I will also send against them the teeth of beasts with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword shall destroy outside. There shall be terror within. And notice he doesn't say anything about F-16 fighters. Hint, hint, hint. For all those people who want to take this text out of its historical context and try to twist in modern day uh, laser warfare. No, they were wielding swords back in the time, slicing folk up. And he's not talking about what's going on uh, in the Middle East. They didn't have F-16 fighters and combat pilots and all this kind of stuff. The sword shall destroy outsider, or store outside. There shall be terror within for the young man and virgin, the nursing child with the man of gray hairs. Remember when Jesus told him in Matthew 24, pray that your flight not be in the winter nor on the Sabbath day. And he talked about the, uh, the women who were nursing because the gates of the city would be locked and it would be an impediment for them to travel um, uh, in the, you know, with babes on their backs and in their arms. So that's what he's saying. The nursing child with the man of gray hairs, the old man couldn't travel. I'm beginning to relate to that. <laughs> Can't move around as fast as I did when I was a youth. You know, children, little children come around you now and they just, they're running all through the place. All you can do is just look at them, try to follow them with your eyes because you can't keep up with them. <laughs> uh, as you get older. But then he says, I would have said, I will dash them in pieces. I will make the memory of them to cease from among men. See, he's destroying them. Had I not feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should misunderstand, lest they should say our hand is high and it is not the Lord who has done this. So God is trying to tell even the Romans who were going to destroy them. You're not going to destroy every single person, even though they probably could have, but they took many of them captive. He says, lest you think you did all of this. And what did Titus say? If you've ever read Josephus, Titus said, there is no way that we could have destroyed them unless their God had sold them. That's precisely what is said in Deuteronomy. How can one chase a thousand 
or 10 put 10,000 to flight unless their Lord had sold them. Titus knew that it was a power greater than himself that was operating in the destruction of Jerusalem. This was God's vengeance upon the nation. And so he says, for they are a nation void of counsel. Now, remember, a fire was kindled in heaven that was going to burn to the lowest hell. It was going to burn all the mountains, etc. But he says, this is the nation. For they are a nation void of counsel, nor is there any understanding in them. He had just told you, oh, that they were wise, that they understood their latter end. And that's what he says. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. See, when they were forsaking the law, um, refusing to keep the Sabbath, killing the priests, abusing the widows and the orphans, and um, committing all these abominations in the temple, they were only thinking about the day when they were murdering the prophets. They weren't considering their latter end. How could one chase a thousand or two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had surrendered them? And that's when he goes into, for they are like Sodom and Gomorrah. So there you have it on Second Peter 3 and verse 7. That's where Peter gets his language of the fire. It's God's judgment coming upon Israel. Yeah, it involves some literal fire, but the real point of it is he took them away like fire would consume everything and brought an end to Israel and uh, to the old covenant nation in order that the new covenant nation might thrive and grow. And that was Christianity. That's the people of God, both Jews and Gentiles, who accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you have not accepted it, this is a great invitation for you to believe in the Lord and to accept him, to obey him, to submit to him in baptism and to serve him. And we encourage you to do that. And if you need assistance, give us a call and we'll help you with more information. But here's the point. Second Peter 3 and verse 7 was all about the destruction of ungodly men in the Jewish nation. Their heaven and earth passed away. Their old covenant, all the things of Israel as a external nation as a physical nation and that's what peter is all about uh second peter is about because it's reminding them of what was in the first so as i conclude make sure you subscribe to our channel uh leave us a comment visit our website and we encourage you to um, share this with your friends in addition uh in our next video now this is also going to be great in our next video, we're going to talk about 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. It's important for us, maybe verses 8 and 9, it's important for us to establish that because there are a lot of people who want to know about, you know, they always want to bring that term up and they always bring it up way out of focus, way out of context. We're going to pull it in so that it remains harmonious with the context that we're discussing. With that, I'm William Bell saying you have a pleasant day. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.